Hi, I'm Jeff Merrill from JMYS with my good friend, Steve D'Antonio. I'm in California, Steve's in Virginia, and we're gonna do a different type of discussion than what we've done before. Uh, perhaps you've seen the cruising conversations that Steve and I recorded. There's three of those on YouTube, very interesting uh, details of how Steve goes about doing his business. This particular um, episode, if I'll call it that, is to talk about taking a very well-built boat, a used boat, sending it to the yard, um, rehabilitating it, restoring it, just refitting it, all those different aspects. We have a specific boat in mind. It's the Nordhaven 60 Gennard, now in Sausalito. It's a boat that I have listed for sale. Uh, and Steve and I had a long involvement with this project. And we're going to go into some of the details, I hope, of what Steve advised the client and how the boat is configured the way it is. So that's a little bit of an intro. Steve, why don't you chime in and uh, say something here? Yeah, so uh, this was a... Um... This is a very interesting project and one that I, uh, deep down, I'm a boatyard guy. And usually I try to talk people out of major refits. They sound romantic, but in fact, they're not typically. However, in this case, um, because of the age of the boat and the way that it was originally equipped, it made sense to do a refit uh, for this owner uh, because there were things that it didn't have that he wanted. And uh, he had uh, specific ideas about what he wanted the boat to be as a cruising platform. And he's a fairly technical guy. So with that package in mind, it did make sense to do a refit in the right location, of course. So that becomes the key component of once you decide to go down that path of a big refit, uh, the quality of the yard, the communication ability of the yard, the technical expertise of the yard, all of those uh, become paramount because that will really make or break a refit. And in this case, I'm happy to report it made it um, because we uh, amazing. We chose, yeah, we chose, we yeah. chose well. Uh, the yard was very receptive to the wide range of modifications that we wanted to make to this boat, as well as fixing things that were uh, both uh, wrong because of deferred maintenance from the uh, previous owners, as well as from the builder. You know, there, there were things that were, let's say, not necessarily wrong, but not as good as they could have been. So one of those, while we're there, uh, we had a hundred of those. A lot of while you were there's were conducted and the, uh, the owner of the boat was very open to your suggestions, uh, very engaged, very active in the whole process. And this started back really as COVID launched. And I never going to say COVID's gone because we never know what's going to happen. But uh, I had been in the Trawler Fest in February in Florida the Stuart Trawler Fest, had been aboard this boat. This is a boat that I had listed before, uh, helped another broker find a buyer for it, and it was back on the market. Um, the clients flew out from San Francisco. We spent a day going through the boat in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, both flew back to California and then started talking about it. And about then, as we rolled into March, the world shut down. We had the boat under contract, but we weren't allowed to fly. So the owner and I were stuck in California. Fortunately, we had Steve... Uh, Hired. We also had a good survey team, including Bernie Francis, who's another regular with uh, in our world to help uh, operate the boat there. But it, it's one of the first surveys that I didn't attend, and it was very frustrating to not be there. But I was very comfortable and very confident, Steve, knowing that you were there because I know you you know how this works a lot better than I do. So we we bought the boat. You went through it. You did your normal report. Talk about the, the survey process, then we'll talk about shipping the boat to where it went to, and then maybe some of the uh, the improvements and repairs and retrofits that were done. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the inspection that I did on this boat was, uh, I would say, quite typical uh, for a boat of this age and from, uh, from this builder. Uh, the list was fairly long. Uh, there were no deal stoppers on it per se. Um, the, again, there was a fair amount of deferred maintenance. Uh, previous owners had neglected to do things they probably should have done. Um, and the boat was uh, was idle for a long period of time as well, which was never good uh, for machinery. And so it, it had suffered from that uh, to some extent. But mostly uh, the, the scope of the project became what the owner wanted in the way of improvements to make the boat not only as good as new, and, and we said this several times throughout the refit, better than new. There are, there are so many things about this boat that if you bought a brand new version of it, you wouldn't get 
that um, you know that I think distinguishes it. And hey, don't, don't, don't for the magic words, excuse me, but better than new. And new is a difficult word because what's new is new last week. Is that two years ago? New is tomorrow more than yesterday. But yeah. we did put together a it, the boat really was fine on the survey, but you found some things, like you said, some was deferred maintenance, some was the way that the, the yard built it. Uh, it's a Nord Oven 60. The boat's name is Jannard. I don't know if we remember, uh, mentioned that or not. Uh, so very good, popular model, um, a lot of good things going on it and happy to buy it. But uh, the seller, sorry, the owner of the boat really wanted, ha had time with COVID and the uncertainty of when things would be active again, wanted to really have the boat put together with your recommendations so that when it was done, however long that took, whatever it cost, he would be able to take his wife and family and go off cruising for 10 years without worrying about things failing. And that was sort of the, the driving force is, I want it better than new and I want it to last for 10 years, which is a very mm -hmm. tall task and probably impossible to completely achieve, but there was no limit to what recommendations you had that he wouldn't consider. So. Yeah, uh, no, that's, that's true. And, uh, he, you know, he emphasized the uh, desire for reliability. And even if he hadn't, that that is always at the top of my list. So when you undertake a refit like this, invariably you have owners, especially technical owners like this one say, hey, I read an article about <clears throat> or I saw, saw a YouTube video about I want to use this product, product X. And in many cases, what I'm saying is it's intriguing. You know, that's a great idea. I love the concept, but there are virtually none of them out there. <clears throat> so as a result, if our goal is maximum reliability, we're going to go with stuff that is tried and proven. And um, and and he he accepted that. You know, he he was um, uh, sort of understood the value of um, staying with things that both you and I, uh, you know, have opinions about equipment, about systems, about the way that things should be done based on our many years of, of operating these boats and refitting them. And when I said to him, you know, I wouldn't do that, but here's what I would do. We probably had literally a hundred of those conversations. And that, that was separate and apart from the overall discussion list of all the things we wanted to do. <clears throat> but there were probably a hundred of those, hey, should we do this? And if not, what's the best way to do it? So for each piece of equipment that we either replaced or renewed, um, you know, I was saying, here's what I would do. You know, here, here's how I would have this system. And he, uh, you know, it sounds cliche, but I had the blank check to essentially pick anything that I wanted. And in and, and all of these projects, I either build a boat or refit it the way I would want to have it. You know, if I was going to cruise it, here are the things I would select. And and uh, he really gave me a free hand to do that. It's it's a Steve D'Antonio boat, and that <laughs> it says a lot. Uh, you really go through a lot of details here. Uh, you're very current on all the codes and the regulations. You are working with several different yards on new builds. You do a lot of used boats. You're truly all over the world. Last week you were in Taiwan. I mean, I don't even know where you're going next. It's just a so you're as completely plugged in and as smart on all the stuff as possible. And you had a very willing, receptive, uh, caring buyer who wanted to make the boat right so keeping the, the story moving along yeah. the boat was purchased uh bernie helped load it on the ship it then went up to vancouver bernie was actually did that. oh you, you were with bernie on that okay yep. uh, did you have enough life jackets on board for the two no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> did, so yeah. so then the boat arrived up in vancouver um jones act had to go from u.s port to the canadian port and was offloaded, and I'm not sure exactly, but I believe the guys from Philbrooks, the yard that was hired to do the work, picked up the boat. Uh, the boat's name is Gennard, and took it to their yard. And that was probably, I don't know, July or something like that. We, we closed the deal in March, April, and I'm guessing, I don't know, did, now did you, you helped, the, I, mean, I know you're we're gonna be private about names. We'll, we'll talk about Nord Island 60 and Philbrooks. We try not to mention the uh, owner seller's name. But you spoke with the person. When did you actually go to Philbrooks for the first time to sit down um, and go through the details? What, what, uh, well, we, we weren't really able to do that before the project started because of COVID. It was very difficult right. to, to travel internationally, at least into Canada. Uh, so we did it all remotely, sort of virtually. We did Zoom calls. We did emails. 
uh, we came up with a master list of the things, at least the initial master list of the things we wanted to do in the refit. And uh, and, and Phil Brooks uh, prepared a quote for that, um, a very detailed quote, which we then discussed and eventually you know, gave them the go ahead to start on that. And we had regular updates, um, again, remotely. And uh, actually the first time that we saw the boat wasn't until they brought it down to uh, Friday Harbor in the San Juans, we were able to travel there and meet them to inspect the boat. It wasn't finished. And, and we knew that, um, but we said, hey, as soon as it's able to operate on its own bottom and come down, give us a couple of days to go through it so we can uh, give you feedback on what's going on. They had a lot of questions, of course. So we were able to meet with them there and uh and do that and we was that, that a on... year into the project how long into the project do you think probably that was a year that was probably a year after they first got the boat um well one yeah. of the major improvements to make it better than new was the coating on the hull and having the hull painted it was a blue hull now it's yeah. a nordhaven beige color uh yeah. i believe it's alex seal that was used yeah it is and and it looks spectacular i have to say oh. i'm a critic when it comes to it's uh, better than new <laughs> it looks absolutely flawless did uh, you see the boat painted or had that had that process been started yet or that process been completed was it still uh, blue hull when you saw it when they brought it down the first time the hull had already been painted yeah uh, okay so different so, boat already yep so we did that twice uh we had two of those meetings in friday harbor we did sea trials on the boat at that point to uh, to, to test systems, engine, wing engine, uh, engine room ventilation, a whole range of, uh, of things that we tested. In fact, we did a full full day of sea trials uh, pretty much on that boat and then a static inspection for another day. Then it went back to Phil Brooks for some more work. Uh, then, then we had another meeting, uh, came down again. And, uh, and then ultimately the final time I went up there to look at it when travel was, uh, you know, was uh, available. More yeah. open. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and I will say that, you know, again, as a boatyard guy, I'm a critic. Um, Phil Brooks really rose to the occasion. This was a very complicated project. It was a very long project. It had a lot of cases of, you know, pulling on loose threads that turned into, you know, bigger things that nobody really anticipated. And they they dealt with those you know admirably, and uh, and I I can, I can say I really have no complaints from a technical perspective or a communication perspective. They really did a great job, and and I was I was uh, I won't say surprised because I know what their reputation. No, is. but the, and the the owner really the, I guess the big measure is the owner is very happy with their work. Yeah. There were some discussions on some points on the bill. Everything was reasoned out. Everything was fairly resolved. So that Phil Bricks knows that they did a good job and the owner got all the work done. We don't have time to go into all the details of things that were discovered. And it you don't do this on a new boat. When you build a new boat and it comes in, you can have an inspection, but you still have to outfit it. You still have to put the tender on, oftentimes add the electronics. You don't know really what you have for a year. And then you still have all these teething issues of how the boat was built or how somebody maybe didn't commission it. Uh, a used boat doesn't have any of those promises or guarantees or warranties, and but the used boat, you know what you're getting right away. And then as you, when you evaluate these boats, you can help guide the people as to what you notice. But there was one major discovery that I don't think you guys realized until until later, and that was in the swim platform area. The swim platform on that North Island 60 is bolted to the hull, which is how they do it on all of them. And it wasn't discovered until later that there was a lot of water that had gotten yeah. in there. Can you talk about that for a second? Because you, yeah. you were tuned in on that. Yeah, so that that actually, that process has evolved with Nordhaven over time and that it's not done today the way that it was done on that boat. It Good. was an earlier boat, obviously. And and uh, so there's a, there's a mechanical fastening that holds that swim platform on and then a caulked seam and uh, water had penetrated. You know, caulk is finite. I tell people this all the time. Uh, that you, you can't count on it forever. So water penetrated that caulk and ran between the swim platform and the hull and where the fasteners were, it then ran into the uh, the void that's inside that swim platform that's inaccessible. Big hollow, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's foam in there, but it, it turned into a bit of a, a mess inside that. And so what we decided to do was uh, uh, open it up, uh, clean it out, 
and actually put a hatch in there so that it could be inspected in the future. And, and you didn't have, I don't like spaces that aren't accessible anywhere on a boat. You and added some air circulation vents in there too, to did. keep it dry. We did. we did. Right. So we, we put a duct uh, fitting in the transom so that air from the lazarette could be pumped through there and uh, you could monitor it. Again, you could take the hatch off very easily from the swim platform. I don't even want to know the time and money that was spent to solve that. And when you walk on the boat, it's not something you would notice, but this is the kind of detail that you go into with yeah. clients to help them get a better boat. I know in the engine room, uh, this is a dry stack keel cooled uh, engine and the exhaust had some issues with it. And you guys worked on that as well, didn't you? Yeah, we had some insulation and support issues that we, uh, let's say we fixed or improved. Um, there was an interesting scenario with, uh, uh, we had uh, some problems with the um, uh, gas separating uh, water lift muffler for the generator, which on that boat is in a chamber that's not really very accessible. It's in part of the air ducting. Uh, some people call that the chimney that goes out uh, into the cockpit. And that that component is in there. And to get to it, you have to take a bulkhead out from inside the LP locker, mm -hmm. which is underneath that stairway. Well, when we took that out, we found, you know, some leaks and, and other things that, that were not really right, uh, that had deteriorated over time. So we fixed it all. And uh, the owner said, you know, how am I going to know what's going on in there in the future? And um, I don't remember whose idea it was, honestly, uh, whether somebody at Phil Brooks, I think, said, hey, how about a, instead of if we put that bulkhead back, we'll make it plexiglass, you know, something you can see through so that you can look in there. And, and it, it had to be a bulkhead because it was the LP locker. So it had to be gas tight. So they they made a, uh, you know, heavy uh, plexiglass or Lexan um, bulkhead, essentially, that enabled you to, to look into that space when you looked into the LP locker. And you could see that water lift muffler and hose clamps and, and hose you know I, I was on the boat for four days doing the video and the photos and going through it i didn't even know that was oh, there. Yeah. this is the kind of thing on yeah. this boat that is i know one area that's really cool is when you go down the stairs from the entry level to the utility room outboard on the port side you can access the active fin stabilizers mm -hmm. and there's a locker two two lockers above that and you get down below to see the stabilizers but a clear plan, another similar, the floor was made lifting up where you can see through. So if you want to check on the stabilizers underway, you can open up that locker door, look through the clear floor and see it. This type of thinking and the detail just makes this boat so spectacular and better than new. Yeah, yeah, that you wouldn't, you wouldn't have that on a new boat unless you asked for it when it was being built. And uh, even then you might not have it. Yeah, maybe not uh, want, they don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, and I don't blame them. You know, it's a lot of customization. Uh, so this is this, you know, type of project certainly lent itself to that. Um, and needless to say that the boat, you know, has a full monitoring system. It has a full Maritron. That system. was, yeah, the Maritron system was added there, which and is. The, the owner spent, the owner and I designed it. And then he spent a tremendous amount of time fine-tuning it, customizing it, in, inputting all of the settings. Uh, we, we had no less than probably 50 email and telephone exchanges to decide what's where the red line is going to be, where the green line is going to be, where the yellow line is going to be, what are we going to monitor uh, on a regular screen, what are we going to monitor on a special screen, and we did, a, we did a, a, just a huge amount of that. And one of the things that we monitored was, there was the stuffing box, which is typical. But when Temperature. We were in the area, he and I looked at it and he asked about the brush for the shaft. And I said, yeah, that's the shaft brush and it, it provides bonding to the shaft. But in fact, it really doesn't work because none of those do. They, they, they don't have a good enough connection to meet the ABYC standard for bonding. It has to be less than one ohm. And I've never been able to get one of those to, to work like that. And he said, well, what, well, that's no good. What do we do? And I said, well, if you really want it to work, you have to use a, a proper shaft brush that uses a silver ring, you know, literal silver, because it's very conductive um, and, and several brushes around it that are all spring loaded and calibrated. And he said, well, let's do that. Wow. And I said, That's a pretty big job. And he said, I don't care. I want, I want proper, you know, grounding for the shaft. So it's protected. Okay. Well, this boat has 
one of the only you know shaft brushes that actually works and meets <laughs> On um standards, so that, I looked in the build. I didn't see that. I, I mean, that one too. Gee, I'm feeling bad about things. I gotta redo the uh, write up on the list. <laughs> uh, I, I know I that the the main engine had a service work on it. The generator was serviced. The wing engine, uh, proximity wise, being in British Columbia, the uh, doors and windows, the the diamond sea glaze were were attended to, repainted. Um, the steelhead crane was taken off, picked up by steelhead, redone. The it was a real, it was almost like a vintage car type of thing yeah, where yeah. we went through and redid I, everything. I, you know, having done that on vintage cars, I even said that to the owner. I said, you know, this, this is what we would call a nut and bolt restoration on a car because there's really almost no part of the boat that didn't pass through somebody's hands uh, right. at some point. And, um, and, and, and with, you know, really extreme attention to detail between the people at Phil Brooks the owner and me, you know, all looking at what was being done. Uh, in the end, we really got um, a, a, a restoration. I got, you know, Mike might be, again, another word to use for this because the boat has been much like when you do this with a car, a vintage car, it's actually better than when it came out of the factory. And, um, and, and in some ways this boat is, it does certainly have unique features that you wouldn't get on a new Nordhaven 60 unless you asked for and paid for them. And again, even then, Nordhaven might be reluctant to do some of this because it's it's really beyond uh, what even modification. Well, and, and a new Nordhaven has great stuff that's going to last for a number of years. This one was old enough where it was time for right. Right. everything on a boat has a lifespan or a life cycle and sanitation hoses, batteries, things. Those go yeah. through several different iterations over time. And it was time for this boat to have this and the right person bought it to have the wherewithal and the desire to make these improvements and to, to make the boat better. Uh, and the, well, foundation, the foundation, you know, uh, uh, it goes without saying, I would not have uh, suggested that a buyer consider doing a project like this with just any brand of boat. You know, there are some where I would say, look, you can put a lot of money into this, but it's always going to be an X, you know, and uh, with the Nordhaven, you know, that's one of a handful of brands where it's worth doing this to it, because when you're finished with it, it can go anywhere in the world, you know, and that and that's been proven. And um, so it's it's worth it. Uh, and, I think that's that's part of it when we're living in a society where everything is instantaneous, where, you know, you, you just don't have the same attention span and yet, if you're going to get on a boat, it has to be reliable, has to be dependable. Uh, you, you know, his goal again was ten years of trouble-free cruising. He bought a Nordab because he knew that those were the best. It was the right size boat. He can handle it. Um, he went through every detail with you, the tools, the spare parts. There's so many other parts of the story we haven't even touched on yet to mm -hmm. try to get it right. And then, unfortunately, as can happen. Time caught up and some health issues arose and that's why it's for sale. It's, it's a heartbreaking story because yeah. he's a great guy. He's been super yeah. active and involved from the beginning, really enthusiastic, friendly, active, and just is not going to be able to use it the way he planned. Now, somebody wishing to buy a new Nordhaven 60, and that's what they do. They build new boats and they do a great job at it. They're not going to get all these things because it would slow down the production. That that's one thing, but I think the you don't really know what you have when you build a new boat until you've used it for a while. Here's a boat that had been out there. We evaluated it. We knew what we could do to make it better, and we did that. And I think that's a that's an advantage for buying a brokerage boat. Uh, you 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 can see typically what you're buying, and you can own it within thirty to forty five days. Now this was roughly two years worth of restoration, but with his business, he wasn't able to really do it. And with COVID kind of blocking travel, the timing was great. Unfortunately, now that it's done and ready and we have the video and the photos and everything's up there, he has to sell it. And he's not trying to get all his money back out of it. Um, I, I'm not gonna quote numbers on it. It's in the specifications, approximately what was spent. So it, if you are looking for a new Nordhaven 60, and I, I don't wanna talk you out of building a new one, but I would you should consider a boat like this yeah. Yeah. I do help people build build those, so I don't want. Yeah, to we talk. need we need we need new boats so that they can eventually become used boats, yeah. and you know. You, but you you're happy helping somebody build a new boat or build a or, or restore okay. a used boat. But I think this is such a popular model, and it's in such great shape that somebody who is considering new but didn't want to wait, this would be a perfect boat for them to consider. I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect boat, but this would be a great boat to get on board 
and see. So the write-up on my website, gmys.com, uh, we've got a photo uh, gallery in there, lots of photos, some 360 tours, which are kind of fun to go through the boat, 360, and then what I call a talk-through video where I walk through the boat and talk through it. Uh, Steve, I think we could, if we went into detail, we could go on for a couple of hours here, which I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I hope people are still listening at this stage. <laughs> It could be it could be a technical you know uh, discussion uh, uh, series to talk right. about the things that we did to this boat. But as you said, the specifications detail you know virtually all of those. And if somebody had questions about those, we could always answer them. But I'm I'm proud of 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 this finished product, and and uh, it it um, sort of defies the advice. Again, I'll say this again: when people talk about doing a refit. Um, I tell them, you know, that's something you want to try to avoid. Buy a better boat, spend more money on it now, and and don't buy a boat that needs a refit. Well, in this case, the owner did, and it actually went really well. And the uh, the finished product is spectacular. And, and so, yeah, it was not a derelict boat. The boat was no. able to go right no, no, there. No, no. But no, all new navigation, all new LED lights, all new upholstery, all new carpeting, all new overhead panels. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And I've tried to cover the visual things that you can see when you go through the boat, but the plexiglass propane locker bulkhead, I mean, I didn't know about that. And the special deluxe custom Batman shaft brush, I didn't, I didn't know that was on the boat. There's just more to it than, than meets the eye for sure. You could go aboard this boat and be forgiven for thinking that it was new. I mean that, and again, I don't, I don't say that lightly. There are not many boats that I've done that on there. I've seen that before where, you know, a really meticulous refit has been done. But uh, this is one of those cases where the boat really does, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to find some evidence that this boat is, how old is it? It's, uh, oh gosh, uh, too many boats in my head. Um, yeah. But, but we were saying uh, 2013 was the model year. Yeah, so and it's, we're saying it's a 2022, 2013 slash 2022, just with the changes there. And the Nordhaven quality is so solid. The construction is so good. The systems, the engineering. But again, yeah. over time, things do raise their hand and say, hey, I need to be fixed or changed or or corrected. And that's that's what his whole goal was. I don't want to deal with that. I want to get on the boat when I'm able to and just take off. And yeah. the boat is in that stage right now. He's not going to be able to do it. Somebody's going to be very fortunate to take on this boat. And if you look at the price that we have, you will see that it actually is less money than a brand new boat. Well, that kind of makes sense because it's a, you know, it's not a brand new model year boat, but fitting wise, accessory wise, option wise, improvement wise, there's a lot of things that you would not get on a new boat that are on Gennard. So uh, Steve, I, again, I don't want to have this drag on too much longer because I think we've covered a lot of ground. Any other parts of the project that you want to discuss uh, or highlight or yeah you know electrically uh the boat is is uh, modern well modernized to say the least we didn't go the lithium ion battery route uh, when the boat was being refit um at that point you know we decided that uh it was probably not something we were going to do at that moment but we made the boat ready for it so all the charters and inverters and, and other components um would be you know happy to be uh, working with a lithium ion battery bank. So if somebody decided to do that, there wouldn't be a lot of retrofit required. We have high output alternators. They're externally regulated. Uh, we have full monitoring capability. So again, the, the, the boat is, uh, that's a big issue. That's a big feature and something that a lot of people are thinking about, both present Nordhaven owners and would-be Nordhaven owners, electricity and storage capacity and things like that. Um, solar uh, capability and, uh, and and things of that nature. The boat has all of that. That's all been modernized. Uh, the battery bank was re replaced. It's new, but we went with a an AGM uh, battery bank instead of lithium. Right and true. If you're on a boat like a Nordhaven that's crossing oceans, you don't want to be an experimental boat necessarily. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, I, I'm just thinking you know, off the top of my head the the flybridge hardtop has a hatch that was added into it. So you could get up there from the inside rather than going around the outside, which we did on another new build yeah. that we worked on together. So yeah. I imagine you probably floated that idea and he was, yeah, let's do it. I mean, that, it was, let's do it. Let's make it better. And the frustrating thing for you and I is that now that it's ready, he's not able to take the mm -hmm. reins and take off and go. So yeah. I hope that somebody watching this will get in touch. We'd like to know more. We, we get uh, people on board by appointments. 
Uh, this video will be up long after the boat has found its new owner. Um, but we, we, it's fun to talk to you, Steve, about all the different things you do on a boat like this. I know, you, again, you do new boats, you do used boats. Uh, we've got a project coming up next month uh, in Washington. You travel literally all over the world, and it's always fun talking to you. Sorry we're not together, but thanks for doing this by Zoom. Any any parting comments before we wrap it up? Yeah, again, I, I um, it is heartbreaking to me that this owner is not going to get the opportunity to enjoy the boat. Um, you know, on many occasions, he said what he had planned to do and, uh, and and how much he enjoyed the interaction of working with this. And I and I said to him the same thing that I say to virtually all of my clients. My reward will be you calling me a year or two from now while you're cruising saying, hey, I'm loving the boat. It's everything I wanted it to be, et cetera, et cetera. That's my goal with any project like this. I'm sorry that he won't be the one to do that. I hope whoever buys this boat will do that, will call me or and or you and say, hey, this boat is extraordinary. Um, and, and I really, uh, you know, I recognize that and I'm, I'm loving it. So I, I hope I'll get that from somebody. I'm sorry it won't be him. Um, but well, but he, in, in some ways, he's said yes to get me to this stage. You've done everything I needed to, but I just am not able to do it myself, just for you know life situations that get in the way. But yeah, that is the goal: is to enjoy it. And uh, he really has a spectacular boat. So the boat's on jmys.com. It's a Nordhaven 60. The name is Jannard. She's located in Sausalito, California. Uh, we'll put, uh, if we can do it uh, on a Zoom, I don't know how to do this, maybe do it later, but put in Steve's uh, email and address uh, his, for his website and mine so you can get in touch with us, maybe be at the very end of this. But uh, thanks, Steve. Really enjoyed seeing you. Thanks for your talks. Thanks for all the work you put in on this boat. Uh, again, going up to do the video and the, the photos, I hadn't seen it since Florida either. And so it had been two years or more since I'd been aboard and uh, it's a completely different boat. It's yeah, yeah. I'll end it with the with the with what this video is all about. It's better than new. It really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good. I'm, I'm. Uh, and I could, as you said, we could talk about this boat all day long because there are so many features. There's so many things that were done to it. But uh, we'll we'll leave it at that. Just to say, she's she's a special vessel. Okay. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Steve, I'll talk to you again soon, and uh, we'll leave it at that. Thanks, everybody. So long. Right. Very good, Ditto. Bye. -bye. Hey, trawler friends, thank you for watching the video. We love doing these videos. It's great having you on board. Great being out on the water. We do have over 100 videos on the JMYS YouTube channel. If you would like to subscribe, you can click the button. If you'd like a reminder on when the next video is going to show up, you can click the bell. That'll give you a reminder. We really appreciate it when you give us those thumbs up. Thank you very much for that. We also like your comments. We like to respond to your comments. So please keep watching. Thank you for your encouragement. If you'd like to watch some other videos, we have a couple of them over here to click on. And there's always something new coming on the JMYS YouTube channel. Stay tuned and we'll stay in touch. Look forward to watching you and you watching me. Thank you.